magic is power. It has the capacity to create and destroy, manipulate and transform. It can shatter the very laws that govern each world. The infinite planes of the multiverse are home to countless mages. Yet for all their mastery over their craft, they are each bound to their own planes of reality, blind to the true vastness of the multiverse. But some mages are born with a potential for more. The spark, this gift realized only upon facing a great ordeal, once ignited, it allows the mage to travel between planes and draw from each plane's magic to reach heights of power otherwise impossible to achieve. They can begin their journey as a planeswalker. Hello and welcome back. Today we are looking at Magic Duel, as it says down there in the bottom right, because you know, titles. Anyway, quick recap on my life before we actually get too far into this. This is based on a actual card game that is out and about in the real world called Magic the Gathering. This was a game that when I was a kid, I never played Pokemon cards or anything like that. I played Magic the Gathering because I'm hardcore and dedicated. So to be honest, when I first saw that this game came out on PC, I was really, really excited. I was like, oh my god, I get back into it. I only really recently got back into it. And turns out I've completely lost the knack for it, so I suck at this game. But even better really than getting over excited about this game is yet again it's free to friggin play which I was really 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 excited for anyway as you then open up the game you are pretty much forced to play story mode this will give you a tutorial whether you've played Magic the Gathering in real life or this game before it will get you to do a tutorial. It's a very helpful tutorial, it does take you through a lot of the basics. It can get a little bit annoying, to be honest, because it will just randomly interrupt a variety of games and tell you, oh by the way, you can now do this, or have you tried doing this? My advice is once you've sort of picked up a few things, just click the little box that says don't show me again, and it just stops really with the constant tutorials. It will show you a new thing once and if you want to you can do little quests even like mid game because it will just pop up and go hey fancy doing this quest and we'll teach you how to do something new but once you've done that it pretty much stops it gives you a starter deck as well which is also quite handy so it's sort of like a baby steps and once you've completed the first story mode you will then unlock a deck for you as well as give you these coins you can then go into the store and there are a variety of actual decks you've got origins I'm probably gonna completely screw up a lot of these pronunciations by the way Zedikar, Gatewatch, Innistrad, Geldrich, Kaladesh, Aether Revolt and Amon Ket so each one of these represents like a different family I kind of want to say um, basically the way the game worked in real life is every four to five months they'd bring out new cards and these new cards would be based on a different sort of story because there were books as well like actual novels that you could read and obviously you read novels and why wouldn't you but from there the card game was then based and it became really really interesting for a lot of people. There are in-game purchases which you can buy more gold or coins or whatever and from using those coins you then can buy booster packs or you can buy aesthetic items, you can buy art for your land, uh, these can get quite expensive, card sleeves just to make your cards look a little bit more pretty 
depends on how you want to play. The basic ones are pretty okay. I mean, price-wise, it's all right to be honest. You can get some more expensive ones. One of the ones I really want is the Black Lotus because when I first started playing, it was all about the Dark Lotus or Dark Dark Steel, which was the fan favorite because there was a card called Dark Steel Colossus which had 11 attack, 11 defense, was indestructible, so you couldn't kill it, and it also had an ability called Trample, which we'll go into some of the perks a bit later on, but basically this card was brutal as hell, particularly because you only start off with 20 health points, so if you could get this card out pretty early, you're doing effectively 11 damage per hit, so two attacks and that's it, over and done with. Anyway, I'm going to try and do a base walkthrough of the actual game. Like I've already said, I, I completely suck at this now. So we're going to do a story mode and we're going to go for Amonkhet. Because, well, it's the new one. So completing this quest will give me 10 gold. And upon completing that quest, I'll unlock each next one until I'm assuming I beat up Amon Ket who is I'm assuming this weird dog, dog god thing in the background he's also back here but let's start our duel shall we right so the way in which this game basically works is it's a battle card game you have a select amount of cards in your deck it'll be 60 you draw seven if you don't like what hand you've got, you can redraw your hand, but each time you redraw, you get one less. Now, a deck is made up of a variety of cards. You have land cards. These basically serve as your mana. Each card will have a cost, which can be seen at the top right. It will be a color card. These will be mountain, plain, swamp, water, or forest. This will be depicted by a small symbol depicting what you can see on the bottom of those mana cards. Next to it will be another number, which can be any land card. So it might require two mountains and four others. It might require one plane and two others. Once you put that out, you are then free to cast whatever you want, as long as it corresponds with that card. Throughout the mission, however, in this game, is it will give you what is called tips. Now, with these tips, there are... It's a bit annoying, to be honest. It Basically, it will be like a mini-quest within the actual game. It will basically just teach you something else. Like the one I'm showing here, this is about a perk called Exertion. So, when a card attacks, if it has an Exertion feature, if you, when you read it, it will have a certain perk that you can display or put onto another card. So, for example, when this card attacks, I can select an opponent's card to be tapped or can't block. So, for this one, it will be unable to block. So, effectively, I can then attack, which is displayed by tapping the card, which basically turns it to the right, as you can possibly see on the opposing side. So I now select my attack phase, and from here, I can then select an opponent card to block. Now, annoyingly, this game does get a little bit convoluted on how to do this. So when you click on random things, like it just doesn't let me do it, weirdly. But but well, it takes a bit of practice. I, th I think there needs to be a bit of a rework on some of these things on how it lets you do it rather than having to just constantly click around and show more definitively how to do it. So it can get a bit confusing, but the end result will be the same a bit annoyingly. So it can be done. And admittedly, at this point, I am just kind of monging it, but it's quite simple really to do as well as exerting you've got things like flying so a flying creature can only be blocked by your opponent's flying creature or if it has reach you've got another perk called haste normally when you put a card out into play it cannot attack until the next turn it's what the game refers to as summoning sickness so 
as you play a card, if it has haste, it can then immediately tack if you want. Such as the card that I'd already placed that also has the exert feature, it also has haste, so I can attack this turn with it. Normally I'd have to wait till next turn. You've got others that are called trample. So the best way I can explain this is at the bottom right of each card you'll have two numbers. It'll be for example four slash four. The first number is its attack points. The second number is its defense points. So if I have a 4-4 four, four creature as it will be referred to when I attack with that, if I then get blocked by a 1-1 one, one creature, that's one attack and one defense, four of my attack is obviously going to hit his one defense, or his life, which basically means I then have three attack left over. Now, without Trample, that three does nothing. With Trample, however, it carries over onto my opponent's life bar. So even blocking with certain perks does, well, nothing. You then have instant spells like the one I'm just showing, which is basically it's a magic spell. It will do exactly what it says on the tin at that particular point. You can cast it mid-battle, so just as an opponent is about to block, you can cast it to remove their blocking. You can cast it as they're attacking. You can, it's an instant. You can basically cast it whenever you want. It will also show the opponent's cards as they are dealt, so you can read up on them and show how the opponent is playing. This is against an AI, so it's not going to be too difficult, especially for the simple fact that I'm now going to do another quest. This is, yet again, another annoying feature of the game, because, to be honest, I've literally just done this quest, and it's now going to try and prompt me to do it again. As I've already stated, this does get annoying. However, a lot of the tips it can give you are really, really quite useful. So we're going to skip this one because we've seen it. We know how it works. And yeah. So once you've got the basics, the game does open up quite a lot. And to be honest, I don't really want to go too much into the mechanics of how the game is played because it kind of spills the fun for you guys if you actually want to play this which I do recommend, particularly for the fact that my work life is particularly dull and boring and annoying and stressful. So the, one of the first things I actually do, particularly for me, is when I get home, I just want to relax, have a cup of coffee, just chill out, say hi to the wife. And this is a game that I can actually just sort of sit there and play and just chill out. I don't, it's nothing strenuous, it's not too difficult, it's a bit of fun, it just lets me unwind a little bit, it's a serious change in pace from the normal games I would play running around like a lunatic with a big axe or a sword or a massive gun. It's honestly it's quite enjoyable and one of the things that I've also come to realise as well is a lot there's a lot of stigma within games at the moment whether they promote violence etc etc so if you have kids this could be possibly a good idea for your kids. There's, I mean not to try and sound too preachy and father like I don't actually have kids but you know, there's there's math involved, there's a lot of thought for, there's thinking, there's planning. It could be a good idea, just make sure you hide the bank details from the uh, in-game purchases because I think some of them can get quite costly. But overall, this is a pretty steady game, it's pretty solid. If you're not into card games, then fair enough, not everyone is. I think the only reason I particularly enjoy playing this game is because I used to play it as a child up into my late teens. I really did enjoy this. Like as an actual tabletop game, I spent hundreds upon hundreds of pounds actually collecting cards. I, I think at one point I had nearly 4,000 cards and complete sets between I think nine different families as it were. So I had the complete lot at one point and I was very proud of it and yay go me. But overall, it being a PC game that is now free to play and just playing through it to unlock different cards. You've got the coin feature. You don't get a lot of coins from actually playing through the game. So it progresses, it sort of slows down the progression of the game as well. So it will last you quite a while. I mean, I've been playing it pretty solidly now for about the past three weeks. And I think in total, I've got 6% of one set 
which is the Origins family within the cards. The rest of them, I have 0%. So in three weeks of play, I've unlocked 6% in, I think there's like eight different sets within the game. So in total, that's probably less than 1% complete, really. I've not worked too much with the story mode. I've been trying to sort of play the battle modes on a higher difficulty to try and get myself, push myself back into it. And in general, I'm I'm really enjoying it, and I hope if any of you guys actually decide to play it, you'll enjoy it as well. I mean, even if it's not your sort of game, it's it's free to play, so maybe give it a crack, see how how you like it. You never know; it might be interesting. But really, overall, is if you've played this as well as tabletop, it might be a nice little blast from the past, a bit nostalgic moment for you. And hopefully as well, if you need a little bit of a stressful life, it might sort of just change the pace down a bit. It's a little bit calm, relaxing, sort of like a, a gamer's version of Sudoku, I suppose you could sort of equate it to. But honestly, it really is a good game. It's quite fun. There's a lot to it. I mean, there's been some new mechanics that have been brought in that even I was really confused at, like the exert mechanic that's that was a completely new one for me I've not seen that before so if you haven't played before a lot of it will be new and probably a little bit confusing and just seriously just try the little tips that it constantly throwing at you it, doing them does actually help and make sense and is worthwhile like at the moment my opponent has literally just attached a card to my creature which prevents it from attacking or blocking or doing anything I can't do a damn thing so what I'm now able to do is cast because I look at these things I can attach another card to that to remove it from my creature it keeps it in place so my opponent can't get it back to recast it but I can put it elsewhere as you are about to see so I have to play this, I have to play the card rather than cycle it because it has two abilities. I then select my opponent's attachment card and yeah, goodbye. I now have my creature back. So there is a lot of strategy involved. It's it's not just throw cards out if you like Yu-Gi-Oh perhaps. I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh is a, card, a, a throw cards out but I would say it's a lot more complex than Yu-Gi-Oh because there's a lot more to it. You've got enchantments, sorceries, instants, creatures, traps. Each creature has different perks and abilities, different standings. You can play colorless decks, you can play swamp decks, you can play mountain decks. You can do a swamp and mountain deck. One of the one of my favorite decks that I particularly use at the moment, it's all about sacrificing my own health points to draw a lot of cards back from the grave switch side to it is every creature I have every time it deals damage it also gives me health so all of my cards are pretty much immortal because all I do is to sacrifice a little bit of health get that card back into play that card can then attack and give me back that health that I sacrificed to get it back into play it, there's honestly a load of weird and wacky mechanics that you can do with this you can play haste decks, which every creature has haste. So you can just constantly throw out cheap and cheerful creatures that are just constantly niggling away at your enemy's health. There's an amazing backstory to it as well, if you're interested into in a little bit of backstory. If you are also interested in perhaps the novels, you can find them on eBay or just in generalised bookstores. To be honest, the game overall, apart from the actual overall universe as a game, is really quite fun and interesting. Like I've already said, some of the mechanics and how you have to click things gets a little bit strange and odd, but as a whole, it plays quite well. It's more you have to get used to it. It's Some of the things aren't explained as best as they could be so overall I would say that there needs to perhaps be like a uh, tutorial rework in a way in which you couldn't explain it better 
such as some of the blocking techniques like for some strange reason I'm having a absolutely delayed of time sometimes blocking selecting the perks in which for me to place upon an enemy or on myself gets a bit strange but to be perfectly honest it's a quite a slow place game I mean at any point you can just sort of get up and make yourself a coffee or a tea or just chill out and have a good time I don't know just read a newspaper and occasionally click to do your next attack there's no game timer so you can take as long as you wanted relatively speaking so as long as when your opponent is attacking as long as you sort of pay attention during that point you'll be fine so to be honest you can at just play the game at your own pace it's for me like like I keep saying I just use it when I get in from work I just want to relax unwind a bit just chill out have a conversation with the wife drink my coffee and just yeah play a quick game of this I'm generally don't rush it and I find it quite satisfying and fulfilling overall it's quite nostalgic for me like I said I've played the game the actual card based game in the past and I find it a very fulfilling process actually just playing through it again it's generally quite nice the overall change of pace is very welcomed sometimes I feel actually trying to make these videos gets a little bit stressful but I'm just quite happily plodding along in my own little world playing a card game without a care in the world just clicking random buttons I can do it all one handed I don't even have to have my keyboard on me I can just sit there with my mouse and just poke away and yeah beat up other wizards using a flying dragon so as a whole it's a calm collected stable game that you can just relax and take your time with play at your own pace and until next time I hope you enjoy have fun and see you soon